Okay, so today we're going to be talking about knots and some very interesting topological surfaces you can get from knots. It's going to be a fairly practical kind of uh, thing. So, basically a curve, sorry I mean a, a knot, is just a three-dimensional curve in space which uh, goes back to where it started from. And um, the thing that makes it interesting, well, the way we define knot theory is to say that two knots are the same when you can continuously deform one thing into another. Um, now, if you're looking at kind of stricter topology, you would just say that every knot is equivalent to a circle. But if you only... Um, that's because in topology they use homeomorphisms and things where you could do that, but if you're actually just interested in knot theory then you can add an extra constraint that you're not allowed to push one of the lines of a knot through itself and then of course this trefoil knot here has a fundamentally different form from this sort of just a circle basically anyway can we make a surface which has this knot as its boundary let's have a go Okay, so I've done it. Okay, so there's actually more than one surface which has the trefoil knot as its boundary. And uh, this isn't actually the one that most people would probably think of, although it does seem immediately to be more obvious to um, make this kind of surface to have a boundary, which is the trefoil knot. Now, what kind of surface is this? What can we say about it? Well, the first thing we know about it is that it only has one um, circular or disc-shaped boundary. How do we know that? Well, because it's what we got from a knot, which is just a, a loop which is distorted in such a way that, well, in this case, we can't untie it. So it just has one disc as its boundary. But what else do we know? If we just follow this thing round, oh, it twists round once. Do you see it's basically just a band which has been twisted a few times, like a kind of Mobius strip? Okay, if you so if you take a look at this thing again, which we got by we got by attaching a surface inside a trefoil. Uh, note that it's um, kind of like a Mobius band, except that it has three half twists instead of one half twist. So um, you can see this, well for a start you can see the, the reason why there might be three twists is because the trefoil, uh, you know, just translating its name, it has three leaves, it has these three bits um, where the um, sort of loop the curve of the graph sort of uh, has to cross over a later point of the curve in some sense. So we have these three crossover points here which correspond to the three twists in this band-like um, surface that we could, can put in between. So to get more insight into this let's go the other way around. If we wanted to get our trefoil back from this object we would just want to cut out all of this kind of surface here and then that would just leave the kind of boundary which is the trefoil that we started with. So to do the corresponding operation to this, um, this band with three half twists I think all we have to do is just cut on the lines I've drawn on. 
and then we'll take the middle out and the remainder should be a truffle. Okay then, so all being well, this ought to separate into a trefoil and something else. And it seems as if this something else, well it's just a copy of the original thing and it's caught on it I think. Doesn't look like there's a way to get it out. So let's just cut away this, uh, this thing here. And now we can see that what we've got left is indeed a trefoil. So, um, essentially what this shows is if you take this and you remove all the white stuff, you get a trefoil. Well, all of that, as interesting as it is, um, that's not actually the normal way one would probably think of a, tre of a, a trefoil as generating a surface. Because somebody called Seafrit did some amazing work on how you could take any knot and use it to create a orientable surface. However, if you look at this, it's actually not an orientable surface because it has three twists. It has an odd number of twists. So if you're walking along here, you turn upside down, you get you turn upside down here as the thing twists, and you turn upside down here and you turn upside down here. So you'd end up upside down. Um, so basically, this if you're a creature living on this surface, a 2D creature, um, there would be no um, there would be no eternal concept of left and right because if someone told you you were right-handed, all you'd have to do is go all the way around the surface and come back to where you started from. Um, and then you would not be like that, you'd be left-handed. Okay, so you see this nice, well-formed trefoil. The strings have different colours, but it is a proper trefoil knot. What I'm going to do now is to make another trefoil knot. Now, as I start to construct it, I imagine it won't look very familiar. There's a few stages I have to do but eventually we should end up with a proper trefoil knot. Okay, so what we're going to start with is a big loop that's going to represent the outside of our trefoil and another loop which is going to get lifted up here. So to do this, we're going to add on the boundaries of some kind of opened Mobius strips. In other words, we get a couple of strings like this and we just give them a twist and then we're going to use them to prop up the thing. What we actually have is just two loops and then three of these kind of crosses linking the two two loops. Now this isn't a um, trefoil knot, it isn't even a knot because we've got things like this happening where we have a degree three vertex if you like. We ought to cut out these um, in-between bits. Okay, so this is the thing I've just created by snipping away those extra pieces. Uh, these um, places where yellow and pink 
lines cross. They're just uh, they're just crossings. Nothing stuck together there. The blue tacks just to hold the form. Um, and this is a much smoother, nicer looking trefoil. Now I claim that these are actually both trefoils. I claim that this is a trefoil too. But I don't want to distort its shape too much, so instead of converting that into a trefoil, let me show you by converting the trefoil into that. And then hopefully you can see that these two are actually the same shape. Okay then, so what remains now is just to actually make this here for its surface. So, Okay then, and so now I've taken that trefoil shape and I've removed each of these purple binds and I've replaced them with a sort of twisted bit of plasticine which links the top part of the sear for its surface with the bottom part. Um, and these sort of twisted kind of like staircases I suppose um, link the top surface to the bottom surface so we now have one um, one surface another surface which is bounded by the um, bounded by the trefoil now an easy way to prove that it's not the same as the first surface is that this second surface is orientable See it for its surfaces are always orientable. Um, so, how do we know that? Well, you see, let me uh, stand this up a bit. You see, if you want to go from, let's say you want to go from the bottom to the top. Well, you have to... Um, you have to go up one of these three kind of um, twisty bits. The thing is, all the three twisty bits are the same, so it doesn't matter which one you go up. When you go up to the top, um, everything gets twisted over. So, um, but the thing is, if you want to come back where you came from, you have to go down another twist, which will invert that change. And so... Um, you can't change your orientability by going up to the top and then coming back and you can't change your orientability by staying on the bottom because it's flat and vice versa for the top so it's an orientable surface um, unlike the other thing I showed you before which was just a Mobius strip with three twists so in conclusion then um, we see that from our simple little trefoil we can make our sort of variant of a Mobius strip with three twists surface, three half twists, but we can also make this sear for its surface. And it's essentially two planes, um, and then they're joined up by these three twists. 
and the actual outer boundary of this is again the trefoil knot. And notice how these parts twist up as they go. And there's a fundamental difference between this and the uh, thing we got by getting a Mobius strip and giving it three twists. Getting a strip of paper and giving it three twists and identifying it. The difference is that this is actually an orientable surface. It's actually quite a lot easier to show you what we've done today using pictures. Um, but still, it's nice to do the practical things. So here's our trefoil knot. And here is what we did to make the seat for its surface from it. Okay, so to see that the boundary of the set for its surface is indeed the trefoil, um, we can do it like this. So let's just draw that thing again. Here's the outside shape. And here's the inside. And now we're going to draw these crossover bits. So you've actually got to make sure that these twists all go in the proper way. I'm doing it with the one that's going from the bottom right to the top left, always being above. And now if you look at that, it should be pretty clear that that's a trefoil knot. Um, these are the ones going over. If you think about how you wouldn't do that, it, it's not so easy. So, um, yeah, that's that's uh, why the set for its surface is a why the boundary of a set for its surface is a trefoil knot uh, in this particular case. Now there's a lot more about these surfaces. Uh, you can generate one for every knot and they have lots and lots of nice um, properties about uh, related to um, the topology of surfaces with boundary. So um, lots to talk about there. I look forward to making future videos on it.